San Diego Comic Con brings so much into one packed weekend. The highest point being all of the glorious trailers that are released. This year we got Justice League, Thor Ragnarok, Stranger Things Season 2, and our very first look at Ready Player One. For those of you that are out of the loop on one of the biggest book to movie deals that has happened since The Hunger Games, Ready Player One is a fantastic pop culture bible that brings a tasty reference on each page. The author Ernest Cline hand-selected each and every movie, TV show, video game, and other 80s related items that would feel like a blatant cash grab from any other author I couldn't trust on their nerd cred. Well, this is the author's car, so I'm pretty sure we can trust him. The book follows our main character, Wade, who lives in a futuristic world where everyone spends most of their time plugged into a virtual reality world where many everyday interactions happen, such as like school and jobs. Of course, the real world is gross because of this neglect. Basically, the creator of the system everyone uses is the richest person in the world and he suddenly dies, leaving his entire fortune left to anyone nerdy enough to find his three hidden easter eggs within the game. So the hunt begins and anyone has a chance to succeed. The book was so well received that Warner Brothers have actually bought the rights to it before it even hit shelves. Because they knew it was gonna be f***ing awesome. Also it would make sense because they own most of the licenses to the properties to be used in the film and they could probably buy out any others if they wanted to. You can imagine my elation upon reading the book knowing that a film would be coming soon. And you can picture the deflation to a lot of those dreams when it was brought to light that Steven Spielberg would be directing. I'm not saying that he's the worst choice, but when you have others like the Wachowskis or even Nolan under Warner Brothers Keith, what the f***? His recent track record is the exact opposite of what I feel this movie needs to be at its core. I mean, how can you go from the BFG to this. All right, let's move on. I don't even want to talk about the guy they chose to play Wade. So the trailer comes out and it looks pretty close to what I was thinking. If I can ignore how dark and gritty this fantasy world looks like. The odd car race scene that I've since reread the book in search of and couldn't find. And of course, this shot. So we clearly have Wade otherwise known in the game as Parzival's avatar alongside two other pretty clear characters. We have one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here and of course, the Iron Giant. I can understand the initial response from everyone who saw this. Holy sh**! What? I love the Iron Giant! <gasps> Understandably, yes, it is pretty cool that the character made the movie, let alone the teaser. In the same day, this article came out. Again, with the car race, Iron Giant was not present in the book as a main character or a large part of the film. So what is this replacing? I looked at the image again and came to the haunting realization who it had replaced. Uh, let, let's back up a little bit. In the book, there is what comes to be known as the High Five. Yeah! A group of five players who nabbed the first key and cleared the gate first before the antagonist corporation comes in and takes the remaining spots. These five are initially against each other, other than Wade's in-game best friend who he helps point in the right direction. The other three are Artemis, who is an in-game wide celebrity, and the other two are Japanese brothers. After events play out, Wade reaches out to the two Japanese brothers to work together and they bond by going off to a planet. That planet's name, Planet Tokusatsu. What do they play on the planet? The first season of the classic Ultraman series. They take places of characters and play throughout each episode. Once they cleared the season, they received a power-up that allows one of them to turn into Ultraman. Now this comes into play during the end in a huge all-out fight. Many images allude to how cool this would be. So if this moment in the film takes place towards the end of the film, it looks like they replaced Ultraman with Iron Giant. And if that's true, that makes me genuinely sad. I felt so cool when my friends started reading the book and would text me questions about some of the things that they read knowing I would probably know what it was or where they could watch or find more of it. The most consistent questions were about Leo Pardon from the Japanese Spider-Man series in 1978, because why would they know about that? And the other being Ultraman, because everybody was so genuinely interested in this show that became so prominent in the book. But for me, to see Ultraman in the middle of the fight as a beacon of hope against this corporation, who by the way are piloting Mechagodzilla. Ultraman is the granddaddy of the tokusatsu shows that I know and love today. We wouldn't have Kamen Rider or Super Sentai and Power Rangers without the success that Ultraman brought. So to exclude him in such a fashion, well f you Steven Spielberg. Now a few contrary comments agree that replacing Ultraman with the Iron Giant was a good choice because we have more instant recognizability. But the way many movies are made today and find continued success 
is in China. Now, what do you think China grew up with? A show that was bootlegged and broadcast in multiple incarnations over the course of 50 years because it comes from an island just right there? Or a film from America in the 90s? You know what? It was 1999. That technically doesn't count as the 90s in my book. I don't even, it doesn't even get the 90s title. Get out of here. Also, this brings me to my next point. Has the Ready Player One movie dumbed itself down so that more casuals would see it? At least that's what I kind of feel is proposed at some point. Now, the only reason I can understand why somebody in the year 2044 is walking around in this game where you can literally be anything as the Suicide Squad, Deadshot, and Harley Quinn, it's either a joke, well, it's now considered a cult classic film, or Warner Brothers wanted to continue the push of some of their shittier franchises. The whole reason the book pays such a close tribute to awesome things from the 80s is because they're still f***ing awesome. Any modern day references that haven't earned their place come off as an obvious advertisement. The references in Ready Player One's book are a true testament to nerd cred, and you either know them or you have to Google them when you get a chance, and thus are exposed to something you might really, really like. I mean, that was the case for me with War Games, which I had not read at the time of my first reading, uh, but then I eventually saw the film. In the book, they devote almost an entire chapter to just this movie, and that's probably gonna be cut out of the movie too, probably replaced with the Iron Giant, I guess. F it. But I'm still hoping for many of the other pop culture pieces to be sprinkled into this film. But I'm only holding out for one more trailer, an actual trailer, to prove to me that someone on this production is taking it seriously. Because to me, it's more than, oh, so what? They took out Ultraman. <laughs> I like the Iron Giant better. No, it was about giving my community, our community, a niche and very small one that it is it's deserved time to shine. That maybe having this character in the film would propose new people to discover Tokusatsu and fall in love with it like we all did. And okay, sure, Tokusatsu can be really cheesy and cheap sometimes. It is practically a 30 minute toy commercial. You know, a Japanese Power Rangers mentality hangs above it for anyone who doesn't know better. And it and we, the viewers, are so easily laughed at because we, simply enjoy it. We know the sense of justice and heroism that bleeds from these shows, and anyone who has the capacity to look into a few episodes can easily find it too. But all of that potential is replaced by a film character that hasn't earned any place among the other pieces in the story. A character that is so mainstream, even my mom probably knows who it is. This book was written by a Wade, a person who loves and understands the importance of these characters and found the means to highlight the most important of them. This movie, however, is made by a corporation, using these substitute fills to further their own purpose and squander the real references in place of their own. I guarantee you we'll be seeing an Iron Giant 20th anniversary trailer after this movie is released next year, if it's not attached to the beginning of it. And just another thing that's bugging me is that our character Wade was supposed to be overweight, and clearly Ty Sheridan wasn't willing to do this for the role, so instead they just gave him glasses. <laughs> Now he looks like a real nerd. Cause you know, going through life changing events and losing that weight to become someone more healthy and someone more like his in-game persona would just be a boring subplot. Warner Brothers is too preoccupied with trying to figure out what cameos and appearances and references that they can change to make it more of their company that they're really stripping away some of the best parts of the story. And that's where I'll leave this video for today. Drop a comment below about how you feel. Did you read the book? Did you not? Am I overreacting? And does this change the way you maybe feel towards the film? I wanna say thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe if you're new around here and like weird tokusatsu related videos. I also have a Patreon set up for anyone who supports with a dollar to get to see these videos and more a whole day before anyone else. Or check out some more of my videos like my recent Honest Toku trailer on Akiba Ranger. All right guys, till next time.